Uh, well, I play Willow Rosenberg, and uh, she's the computer genius of the show, I would say. And uh, she's Buffy's best friend. And yeah, that's, that's Willow. One element? Oh, wow. Um, there's so many great elements of the show, but I, I really think that, that it's the writing. You know, we have such incredible scripts, and we're just so fortunate to, to be able to, you know, get to act that stuff. So, so I would say that the best part of the show is, is definitely the writing, you know, because then we have so much less that we need to do, you know? You just sort of show up and know the lines, and, and it all clicks. Joss. Joss is, is just an incredible genius, and, uh, and the way he just comes up with things, is, is, it's incredible. I would love to just get around and explore inside his brain, but that's not possible, because I've tried, and he just won't let me. He's like, get away from me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he's just incredible, and, uh, and he's just always on the ball, and always has millions of ideas floating. I think Willow's a good role model. She does extremely well in uh, school, which is very important. And, uh, you know, and, and she's, I think, the most realistic character, you know, when, when you look at, at the kids in high school and stuff. It's just the mail that I, I receive is, is always talking about, you know, oh, I'm just like Willow, or my, my best friend is just like Willow. So, uh, so I know people out there can definitely relate to her. And... Uh, you know, I just think that, that, like, Buffy is the girl everybody wants to be, but Willow is more like what they are, you know, which is, is good. It's just she doesn't have superpowers. What, uh, what qualities does Buffy have that makes her a good role model? Well, you know, she's, uh, she's smart. Uh, she stands up for herself. And even if they play on the whole, you know, she doesn't do as well as she could in school. She does. She scored high on her SATs. So, um, Anna, and she's just, she's a great role model for girls because it, it shows that, that, you know, that you can be strong and confident and, you know, and, and be independent and not have to just go with the flow in high school. I play, I, I play Xander Lavelle Harris. Um, he's, uh, he's very deep. He's kind of like the spiritual advisor to everybody. No, oh, kidding. I'm just a funny guy, you know, joke here, joke there. I'm like seasoning. I'm, I'm kissing more girls now, which is good. I'm, I'm, more, I'm more physically active, um, sexually, of course, but it's all very safe. And, uh, and in terms of the physical stuff, I guess I've just become more, uh, more brave. You know, before I would kind of squeal. Have you ever um, stuck a pig before? No? They squeal, man. man it, it loud. Uh, first season, I was like, I would squeal like a stuck pig. Uh, now I'm, I'm pretty much, I, 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 I say, hey, don't do that, and then I'll run. Yeah, we had a lot of people die in my high school. <laughs> it was tragic, too, and, and we had a mayor that would just try to hide it all. Uh, no, I, I, I wish it was like this. I didn't date in high school at all. And, um, and lines weren't written for me. I didn't go into a classroom knowing what was going to happen. You know what I mean? I wish I did. Now I go into a classroom knowing what's going to happen, like what my test is going to be. So, uh, but no, it's, 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 I hated high school. I, with a passion, I hated high school. So it's nice to, to be able to relive it again. Buffy. Oh, the Buffy? Oh, the Buffyism? Uh, what's the sitch? Uh, what's the 411? Um, uh, hi. <laughs> no, I don't. That's not a Buffyism. That's just a normalism. Um, I, this, they have this certain. Pretty much, they they chop words in half. So that sentence would be they chop or ha. That would be a Buffyism. Um, yes, I'm. I'm basically I'm Buffy's watcher. The um, the basic premise is that we have a an American high school girl who is told um, in her teens that she is the only woman, the only girl uh, in all the world in her of her generation who is, has 
ch been chosen to, um, to hunt and uh, kill vampires. Uh, and um, she's already had a bad experience with that. She's burnt a, a school gym down and she's moved uh, away from, from where she was in order to um, start life afresh and forget the fact that she's the chosen one, the slayer. And she pitches up at Sunnydale High School where I'm waiting for her. Um, I am her watcher, who is basically her mentor, the person who's been chosen to watch over her, to take care of her, to train her, to discipline her, to teach her. Um, and she's um, not terribly happy with that. She really just wants to go out with boys, paint her fingernails and go to the mall. It's, yeah, I mean, the, the, the reason he's British is, is because it provides um, uh, a, a nice um, foil for Buffy's very American um, attitudes, and she's very, you know, she's very teenage. So there's a total culture clash, total t culture clash. I mean, she's talking in a language that my character doesn't understand. Even though we speak the same language, we don't speak the same language. Well, normally... Brits out here get cast as either the bad guys or the, uh, or the complete fools. Giles is not a fool. He's, he's um, deeply learned. One of the choices I made um, at the beginning was that I've prepared for this for some time and that it's, there's a lot of theory gone into it, but that I've had absolutely no practical experience. Um, so that when we actually first get into the, uh, the, the fray, it's a, a, a bit of a shock and, and uh, um, there's a, a fair amount of ground to be had from that. It's the first time that anyone has proven that you can have real humour, wit, um, dry humour, uh, and then at the same time have um, tragedy, real tragedy, and thrills and horror. Normally, um, if comedy and horror go together, it's a spoof. That's the only way people really have ever dealt with it before. And Joss set out from the beginning to, to, to say, you can have all the emotions, you can, you know, and, and they are heightened by the existence of the other emotions. She doesn't stop. I mean, I, thank, thankfully, she's young. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she, um, she doesn't stop. She's in it um, eight days out of eight days. Uh, very rarely is she not on set. Um, she does uh, a lot of, of the physical stuff. She does have a stunt double, but, um, you know, thank God, to be honest, because, I mean, she'd beaten, be beaten to a pulp by now. She's very nasty in the beginning, but um, as time goes on, she becomes more dimensional. There's um, some interaction going on with the other characters that creates... Um, there's always conflict between Cordelia and Buffy, which is always fun to watch. Um, but then there's a romance involved, and so we get to see a softer side of Cordelia, which is nicer and um, surprisingly heroic at times. And um, she's, you know, pretty darn interesting character, in my opinion. <laughs> Through romance, um, Xander and Cordelia have a lot of sexual tension pent up um, since, I guess, we've known each other since we were, long, uh, since we were kids in elementary school. And, um, you know, opposites attract. So she's, he's very tight with Willow and Buffy, which is, you know, considered the Scooby gang, and that was kind of my way in. I think that, first of all, the show is very, um, it's nice to look at. It's shot well. The cinematography is amazing. It's darker, so you're attracted to it immediately because it's different from anything else you might see on television, especially that's ho a high school oriented. Um, I think the fact that there's a lot of teen angst, there's um, a lot of appeal with watching someone such as Buffy, um, a young, pretty girl struggling, you know, coping with situations as they're drawn. She feels different because she's a slayer. Um, that's very compelling. So there's like a drama element. There's a lot of humor and self-deprecation involved. Like the show makes fun of itself in a lot of ways. Um, that's attractive. And special effects and the fighting, you know, draws the men. 
And uh, I don't know, it's just a great show. It's a very ambitious show. There's, we try to tackle a lot of things in one show, and I think we're pretty successful at it. I don't think there's anything else really out on television that does all of those things, humor and drama and special effects and comedy. It's just, it's great. Uh, she has a lot of strength in that department. Um, well, she's been doing it for many, many years, so she's a veteran. She's a consummate professional in the regards of knowing where her mark's hitting her mark, um, knowing her light, knowing her lines. Um, and she's skilled in the regard that if she needs to cry, like, she can do that. She, she's just, uh, she's, she works a lot, and that's why. She's a talented, talented actress. That's the one thing that we've we've been really uh, conscious of is maintaining the the core of the character which is uh, uh, an intelligent inquisitive um, and he keeps to himself he doesn't say anything unless he's got something very specific to say and whenever he talks it's usually some grand observation involving everyone's perception of a certain situation instead of just his own I like that a lot people people make the metaphorical comparison all the time um, I didn't really uh, have a horrific high school career, so I can't equate that to battling demons and monsters on the hellmouth. But, you know, some people apparently didn't uh, get along with their teachers and other kids. I don't know. So the first time I met him at this audition, I was really excited by uh, how much he cared about even the most periphery characters. He wanted everything to be very specific. He had a, he had a real vision for everything that was going on. I liked that a lot. And that was what one of the deciding factors for me wanting to be a regular on the show when they asked me was I knew that um, the person who, whose vision this was was going to stay on. He wasn't going to, like, bake it and then leave it for other people to distribute. He's on the set all the time. He's very um, specific and, and nurturing to it so that we all feel like an important part. Well, at the end of the second season, it's quite a, uh, a shock for Joyce to discover that uh, my daughter is a vampire slayer. So uh, this year, I'm really having to contend with that. You know, what it's like to have a daughter who has superpowers and, you know, worrying about her getting hurt and taking on the world. And at the same time, that, that point between a uh, parent and a teenager, how much of her life can I share? You know, how much do I need to stay out of the way? And that's one thing that's really special about the show, too, is a lot of times um, the main writer or producer will start to kind of back off and turn the reins over to somebody else and move on to another project, and Joss is incredibly hands-on. I mean, he comes down and watches almost every rehearsal and uh, is just really there to keep the thread and the through line and the continuity of the whole thing going.